The air travel industry has been grounded by the coronavirus pandemic this year, and now many airlines are looking to win back some customers with increased safety measures and cheap deals on flights. Hear how United is looking to increase their revenue with new ultra economy class tickets that let passengers get dragged behind the plane by a giant rope. From the Onion and Onion Public Radio, this is The Topical. I'm Leslie Price, and this daily news podcast has just been cleared for takeoff. So stay with us. According to the air travel industry, no one's been more affected by the coronavirus pandemic than the air travel industry. And as the holiday travel season draws near, more airlines are looking to turn around what has been a rough 2020 and lure back customers with some very cost-friendly deals. United Airlines today has introduced their new low-fare ticket option called Ultra Economy Class, which lets passengers get pulled behind a plane with a giant rope to their destination. For about $100 less than your average economy ticket, you can forego a seat to instead be escorted to the runway and given one end of a 75-foot-long rope tied to the plane's turbine engine to hang on to for the duration of your flight. United spokesperson Travis Porter had this to say today. Whether you choose to hold on to the rope for dear life or use United's complimentary knot tying guide to securely strap it around your body, we guarantee your ultra economy experience will be just as satisfying, comfortable, and safe as any of our other flying options. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the views on the ultra economy class. We're joined now by OPR travel reporter Alan Potts. Alan, welcome. Thanks for having me, Leslie. Now, Alan, what I like about this ultra economy option is the open air aspect, but how does it stack up against the competitors' discounted economy options? The price, for one. If you're looking for cheap flights, you're going to want to fly by those United ropes. Mm. For example, a cross-country flight on an ultra economy class ticket will cost you only $215, compared to the $315 you'd spend flying the same route on Delta's lowest economy option, Delta Relax, which lets you sit underneath a toilet for the duration of the flight. Mm, And are there any hidden costs? I know with Delta's Relax, you have to pay an extra $15 to rent a flashlight so you can actually see in the various pitch black waste tanks you're dropped in. That's where I thought that the Ultra option failed a little. The baseline cost is great, but if you want a parachute to safely land at your destination, it's an extra $35. Awful. Or you can opt for a knife at $15 to cut yourself loose during the descent. And if you want to carry on a bag, it's an extra 25 to have a runway worker tape your suitcase to the side of the plane with a two-inch square of duct tape. So that's an extra 50 or 60 bucks right off the bat. Exactly. Critics say that those extra costs really defeat the purpose of buying a discounted economy ticket in the first place. That's why I hear that a lot of people like flying through American Airlines' discounted economy class because they don't have those extra costs. In fact, if you prostrate in front of an American Airlines flight attendant and cry, I'm not worthy, they knock 30 dollars off your ticket. American will also give you a free bag of pretzels if you allow them to whip your bare knees throughout the duration of the flight. That's right. And a lot of competitors are touting today what they think sets their discounted ticket classes apart in light of United's rollout of the ultra economy class. For example, Spirit Airlines charges $30 for checked luggage. But just hours ago, they reminded customers via Twitter that they can always choose to have runway workers throw their suitcase at the aircraft's nose during takeoff in hopes that it will bounce off the tip of the plane to its final destination at a discounted price of $15. Oh, not bad. And Frontier Airlines just launched a nationwide campaign to re-advertise their basic select economy class, which involves groups of customers being released from cages on the runway and sprinting towards the plane to try and board it during takeoff. Nice, I'll have to check that one out. Now, you were able to test out the ultra economy class early. What did you think? I did enjoy the extra leg space and fresh air that surrounded me, but things did get tricky during the latter part of the ascent when I had to deal with passing hail and atmospheric debris. Here's some audio of my experience I was able to record on my phone. Oh, sounds no less enjoyable than any other flight. And at about 35,000 feet, I did pass out, which was a plus since I usually have a hard time sleeping on planes. Any extra cost incurred? I did have to spend an extra 15 bucks for a back brace so my spine wouldn't snap as I whipped through the air at 565 miles per hour, and that brace proved crucial. The man beside me flew without a brace and severed his spine almost immediately. Yeah, it would be nice if that was complimentary, but overall, would you say it was worth it? I did get to my destination 
on time, which a lot of budget airlines rarely guarantee, but the extra costs did add up, and I'm currently undergoing pretty intense skin grafts to replace the skin lost on my face and extremities due to sun exposure. Yeah, you look pretty rough in the picture you sent me from the hospital. Just happy I have a nose again. Thanks, Alan, and get well soon. That's OPR's Alan Potts. We'll be back in a moment. What happens when the bravest among us, our men and women in uniform, are thrown into a nightmare situation? We expect them to rise to the occasion, but we never think about the toll it takes on those who make it out alive. OPR's Jenna Resnick has the story of one such man now caught in the crossfire of trying to piece his life back together. It was terrible. Sorry, I still have a hard time talking about it. That's Mitchell Dunlap, Private First Class U.S. Army. Mitchell has seen active service in both Iraq and Afghanistan, but nothing could have prepared him for what he experienced in the public bathroom of his local hardware store, something that still haunts him to this day. I was sitting there screaming in pain. It was hot, and my entire body was sweating. The smell, that smell doesn't go away. It was horrifying. I, I, th I thought I would die in there. We don't have to go on if it's too difficult for you. No, no, it's, it's fine. I've been working on opening up about it, not letting it have so much power over me. Everyone always talks about the physical pain, but it's the emotional pain that sticks with you. The feeling that you have absolutely no control over what's happening. You know, it's... I lost a part of myself in that toilet. Sorry. Oh, I just need a moment. With Mitchell's permission, what you're about to hear is audio recorded on his phone during the bathroom incident. A warning that what you're about to hear may be disturbing for some listeners, as it does contain violence. Oh, Lord, please help me get out of this and see my family one more time. But if I don't, I'd, I just, I want my children to know that I... Oh, oh no, what's that? Oh, Mother of God, it's coming! Oh, fuck, my ears are ringing! Oh, I can't hear anything! Oh, my God! Oh, if my family is hearing this, I love you! And it wasn't just hard for Mitchell. His whole family felt the brunt of his grunts, and his wife Donna was left just as scarred. There were times when I didn't think he was coming back, but I'm just happy that my prayers were answered and he was able to make it out of that dump alive. Have you noticed any changes in Mitchell since he returned? I'm sorry. He just hasn't been the same since he came back. Even the sound of a toilet flushing or stomach growling is enough to set him off. It's a daily struggle, usually at least twice in the morning and once in the afternoon. But after realizing just how much a toll his experience in that stall was taking on his family, Mitchell decided it was time to take back control. The sounds of those bombs dropping still echo in my head. And even though it can make me feel helpless, I'm doing what I can. I'm seeing a gastroenterologist to get my stomach right, been eating a lot of fiber. It's been good for me, so it... What was that? Nothing, Mitch. You just have some gas. Nothing to worry about. Oh my about. God, it's just happening stay again. Calm. I did. Oh, just stay calm. You want me to stay calm? I'm about to cover this whole place in shit. You want me to stay calm? There is no hope for me. All right, you get out of here. You go, go, save yourself. Oh my God, Don't not worry. again. It will pass. Oh, just take a no. deep breath. Oh, okay, yo. yeah. No, it's, I'm right. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm okay. I'm okay. Mitch still has a long way to go in his recovery, but with the support of his family and a team of medical professionals, he hopes that one day his life and his bowels will return to normal. For OPR, I'm Jenna Resnick. Absolutely disgusting, Jenna, thank you. As a civilian who hasn't defecated since before Operation Desert Storm, I can only imagine the hardships that brave man has endured. Back in a moment. Well, folks, as I mentioned at the top of the episode, I got myself into a sour little pickle and apparently double booked myself. So we're just going to switch gears here for a moment. <clears throat> this is Dr. Leslerford Price's medical log as ordered by the American Medical Association and the great states of New York, Illinois, California, Michigan, and the lower 46. Okay, send in my 930, please, Margaret. Uh, hello, Dr. Price? Ouch, what the hell? <laughs> no need to panic, friend. That was just this year's flu shot. Uh, you are Benjamin, sorry, Benny Nesbitt? Um, yes. 
Leslie, I work with you every day. I sit on the other side of the studio window. Well, I know Benny the segment producer, but I have yet to have the pleasure of meeting Benny the patient. <laughs> Go ahead and get undressed, Mr. Nesbitt. Wink, wink. Yep, all the way down. Tickle, tickle, tickle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, please don't. All right, enough fun. Well, let's just jump right in here. Uh, I don't have a scale, so I'm just going to pick you up real quick. Yeah! What? I'll say between 150 and 300. Ah. And what are you, like 6'10"? Um, 5'7"? Oh, hey now, height matters for fellas like us. <laughs> Let's just split the difference and say 6'4". Sorry, when did you become a doc? Are you even a doctor? Depends on who's asking. Hop up on this examination table, please. You see, for the valued OPR employee, yes, I am indeed a doctor. The doctor, actually. I even have a jar of lollipops. No blue ones, though. Those are mine. Oh, that reminds me. I'm supposed to ask, do you have the basic OPR primary care plan or the one with the broken, weird, and misplaced bones add-on? Uh, the first one. That's the only one available, I think. Oh, right. They cut dental because we all kept licking Dirk's fingers while they were in our mouths, and he didn't like it. <laughs> now open your mouth, but don't get any ideas. I mean, unless you want to. <laughs> Just to be clear... Tongue out. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, ah. Uh, um... Just to be clear, you are a doctor, doctor, right? Listen, you need an OPR in-network provider, right? Well, I work here in this building at the OPR Radio Network. In-network. See how that works? Simple. Plus, you don't really have a choice because I'm the only doctor in your network. But that's okay because you're totally covered with me. Okay, tongue looks good. Gonna test your hearing now, so please put these headphones on and slap your knee anytime you hear a tone. By the way, I have a dual degree in broadcasting and medicine from the premier online school for trick bartending in Yale, Iowa. Yale? Wow. Well, I mean, as long as you have a medical degree. Any day now. Okay, take those off. Great job with that test, by the way. You're being such a good boy. So tell me, what brings you in today? Well, I got an email from HR saying that this was the only day we're allowed to use our health insurance, so I figured I'd get a checkup while I could. Okay, and I see here you have a history of heart disease, mental derangement, and a debilitating phobia of chapstick tubes being rolled really, really high out of their bases until they stick to the roof of the cap and pop themselves out? No. Oh, no? Shoot, that's, uh, that's another patient's deal. Okay, well, between me, you, and HIPAA, let's pretend you didn't hear that. Now, since you're a new patient, I'm going to ask you a few more routine questions. Just uh, slide over a smidge so we can make sure the levels are right. Wait, have you been rolling on this? Sure. Well, can you please turn the mic off? I want to talk about something... Legally, no. Everything has to be on the record. You know as well as anyone how this works, Benny. Come on. <laughs> so are you still at 4629 Essex Court? You can't just nod, Benny. It's radio. Are you still at 4629 Essex Court? Yes. And you live alone? Um, yes. Aw, you should get a roommate. Oh, I don't know. Uh, let's see, uh, what else? Boring, boring, boring. Ooh, here's a good one. Are you sexually active? Yes. <laughs> well, la-dee-da, okay, playboy. Leslie, stop. Ah, <laughs> oh, relax, Hugh Hefner, I'm just kidding. Now lean forward. <laughs> I'm just gonna gently rub your back while you breathe in. Mm. Okay, there you go. Shh. Breathe in mm. nice and deep. And out. Good. Mm. And again. Okay, that should do it. Wow. Feel better, big guy? Well, actually, yeah, that last part was pretty soothing. And I find it soothing that you're the first patient who's lived through one of these appointments. What? It's like I've always said, having your medical care tied to your employment is a good thing, especially for me. Rewarding work, I'll tell you. Wait a minute, am I? Is, is this blood? Am I bleeding? When, when did you, oh my God. Where, where is it even coming from? Is this gonna stop? Not if I did it right. Ah. <laughs> All oh right, come God. on up no, now. No, up, no, up, up, no, off the bench. No, Ooh, watch no, your oozing. No. All right. Gotta wipe up some of this before my 10 o'clock. We'll be back in a moment. Benny, your lollipop. All right, Angie from Payroll, who, by the way, has been waiting very patiently for her turn, is next. And we're going to help you deliver that baby, Angie, just as soon as we're through delivering the rest of this news. Here's what else you need to know today. With his chances of re-election all but lost, a panicked President Trump is hoping to turn things around today by finally agreeing to a Zoom debate. 
Members of the Trump campaign quickly sent over a meeting invitation to both the Biden campaign and several major news networks, all of which remain unanswered. And after failing to earn the amount of support they had hoped to from Latino voters, members of the Democratic Party are trying to figure out exactly what went wrong and how they can do more to court the ever-importance voting base. In an effort to do so, top Democratic strategists have announced today they plan to hold a screening of Three Amigos so they can all better understand Latino culture. Oh man, I love that movie. Count me in. And finally, residents in Chicago may soon be noticing some changes coming to their beloved CTA as Mayor Lori Lightfoot unveiled plans today to replace Chicago's decades-old public transit system with a brand new fleet of police. Well, that will certainly change some people's commute, but if it helps balance the city's budget, then it's a welcome change indeed. And that's the topical for today. I'm Leslie Price. Yeah, just Wheeler right there. That's fine. If you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to check and see if I'm in your network. Otherwise, you're going to get a pretty big bill for listening. You can also like and subscribe to The Topical wherever you get your podcast. All right, Angie, are you ready? Because I'm going to need you to start breathing and push. And don't forget to tune into tomorrow's episode of The Topical, where we'll find out what Angie's going to name her adorable new baby and who the father is. Your guess is as good as mine, and probably hers. You won't want to miss it. We'll see you tomorrow. I think I see the head! The news doesn't stop just because this YouTube video has. For even more on all the worst things happening in the world right now, listen and subscribe to The Topical on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts, you insatiable news freaks.